Alright, pause this video and try the problem on your own. In this problem, we want us to factor this expression completely, which means we're either going to be able to factor it in some basic way, um, or maybe have to do something more advanced, like complete the square, or possibly use the quadratic equation, which of course is another way of completing, uh, looking at the completing the square process. So they give us the function x, maybe the function x to the fourth, they don't say it, but I think it is, uh, x to the fourth plus 6x squared minus 7. They want us to factor it. So the first thing I would do is recognize that if we're going to be able to factor it, it's going to form two binomials here. And I'll need the first term in those binomials to be x squared. Because when I redistribute here to get back to our original function or expression, um, we'll have to multiply x squared by x squared, and that will give us x to the fourth. Then the, we're looking for values that go here and here, that multiply to negative 7, but add to positive 6. So in order for that to happen, in order to multiply um, to negative 7, we need one value that's positive and the other is negative. Because the only way to get a negative product here is to multiply two opposites. 7 is prime. So I put the 7 here and the 1 here, and look what happens. This works because 7 plus negative 1 is 6. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. And now we are going to factor further, but let me just show you why we have to find two numbers that multiply a negative 7 and add to 6. In this factored form, for you to redistribute, you would do x times x squared, x to the fourth. Then you would do x times negative 1, which is negative x squared. 7 times x squared is 7x squared. And then 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. So what just happened? We multiplied these two numbers here. So that product gave us negative 7. So we had to find two numbers that multiply a negative 7. Then when we multiplied x squared by negative 1, we got negative x squared. And multiplied 7 by x squared, we get positive 7x squared. So now we have to combine these two, which gives us 6x squared. So we have to add these two numbers as well. And when we add them, we're really adding this number 7, which goes here, and this number negative 1, the coefficient, which goes here. So we have to add those two. So not only do the numbers have to multiply negative 7, but they must add to positive 6. Now we can factor further. Um, and often this happens. Um, what I mean by this, I mean is you think you're done. But what you want to look for is any other possibility. In this case, we have the difference of two squares, which is right here. It's called the difference of two squares because we're subtracting. And we're subtracting one, a perfect square, from another perfect square, x squared. And in general, you might know this. If, you're fa if you have a difference of two squares, say it's x squared minus a, that factors to x minus a times x plus a. Right? This is a great thing to be able to recognize. So here, x squared plus 7 can't touch that. 7 is not a perfect square, and we're not subtracting, we're adding. But here we can write x minus 1 times x plus 1, and then we're done. Alright, hope this helped.